All right, let's go into the draft here. So they did a remake of the draft. Um, so far, this is what we had. We had Maridon first picked, Eldegoss Mimikyu were the picks on the right side. And at this point, Plaga went for Blastoise Hoopa, I believe. So Blastoise Hoopa is back here. And I think we didn't get to see the picks at this stage. So it's a Snorlax Inteleon. Inteleon, interesting Pokemon into Maridon in the sense that if the Maridon doesn't go drift, you get to just outrange it, right? So this is a kind of a draft that's interesting. Like it's dangerous for the Maridon to go drift into something like Mimikyu, but if it goes Charge Beam, then it gets outranged by Inteleon. So it, it could be a little scary. And Plaga is just gonna double down on going tanks. Tanks like Tree and Blastoise really, really annoying for things like Mimikyu to deal with, right? Mimikyu goes for a Shadow Sneak on someone and you either Surf or just Horn Leech on top of your ally. When the Mimikyu comes through the Shadow Sneak, it instantly gets caught in that stun. If it doesn't have a full heal available, it's going to go down. Uh, it also means that you can just body block the Shadow Sneaks. So I, I like the both teams' approach to this draft, right? The extra tank also means that Inteleon's going to have a much harder time to be able to get through this front line, right? Inteleon does good burst damage, but it doesn't have great sustained damage outside of its Unite move, right? If a tank just starts running you down, you get a couple autos on it, and that's it. And the tank is just going to sit in your face the whole time. Right, which means if a tank is sitting in your face, you can't snipe shot the back line. Fusion also opting to go for Urshifu in this case. I think Urshifu is probably my the, the part of the draft that I disagree with the most. There, Urshifu doesn't really have any good targets to go on other than Hoopa. Maybe Maridon if it can catch the Maridon, but it's going to be tough for them to find the Maridon in these fights. You're going to have to run through a Blastoise run through a tree, all while the Maridon is wailing you with their, their moves. But let's see if they can, maybe they can make it work. When you tank, you get KO'd by Intellia and Unite two or three autos. Um, you should be running things like Focus Band. You should be full HP before you get to him. Um, and you can't just run past everyone in the game to stand on the Inteleon, right? Your team also has to be doing stuff in the meantime. You decide who to pick between Mammo and Tree. Mamoswine gives you better early game uh, and more damage. Tree gives you better pad control because it's a lot tankier. Slightly better late game engages. Um, and it's just tankier overall. But a lot of times it's going to be personal preference. A lot of it's personal preference. Um, Kira is notoriously one of the best tree players in the world. Um... So if he wants to play tree, you got to let him play tree, right? I would say a lot of the North American tree players got good at playing tree because they played against Kira and they, you know, would see Kira on the ladder in scrims and kind of mimic the way he, he plays the, the wood hammer combos. Nice rotation from his, him as well. He can go top, provide a little bit of damage. Um, they can take this portal back and he can just walk to the bottom lane. You might even see Blaziken walk to the bottom lane or into their central area. And uh, Hoopa a little bit alone on the top side here, but Blaze is back now. There's a red buff. I think maybe they're going to give that over to the Maridon. Blast size tree on the bottom side. And yeah, early game definitely favoring the side of Fusion. Fusion does have more experience, but... Still, nothing big decided for either team. Both tanks are in position in mid. They're both setting up their boosted autos. Uh, Woodhammer is online. Watch how watch out Kira looks for this Woodhammer. He does the backwards Woodhammer. Finds a three-man three Woodhammer on the second side. Sets up an opportunity for Maraidon to get a good amount of poke damage. But both teams kind of match their energies and walk away. Neither team really getting away with the game, which I would say favors the side of Fusion. They have the weaker early game Pokemon, right? Mimikyu really needs his level 7 to really come online. Or Shifu obviously needs a lot of experience. But here we go. We go in, Mimikyu does look for the engage, does get Blaze kicked by the Blaziken. But there's a Nemo on the other side to be able to find a comeback KO. Kira also ends up going down at the same time. There's an Inteleon with Snipe Shot also locked and loaded. And a lot of these last hits are going to go to the side that has the better secure, 
which for the time being and majority of this game is going to be fusion they have wicked blow and snipe shot two really big one instance damage moves that's what you want from a good last hitting tool right you want something that does a lot of damage in one instance right if you're if you do a lot of damage in multiple instances then you give the opportunity for the other team in between those instances to be able to get you know take that last hit away from you right so things like wicked blow snipe shot overheat from blaziken all really strong all right anemo finds himself on the bottom pa pad they do have their urshifu unite move eject button one hp just barely ends up getting out but on the other side of the map there was a blaziken or there was a blasters and now blaziken that ends up going down which opens up an opportunity for fusion to look at this bottom objective Dinus has a couple auto attacks, a couple of fell stingers here. Um, would like their tank to kind of tank for them here and also get vision. Um, but generally, you want to have your defender Pokemon stand on top of it. That way, your attacker can comfortably take it down. Anemo with the Trick Room this game, by the way. Interesting. I kind of like the Trick Room. We'll go over why Trick Room is good here. Um, but we're going to see Anemo go for a bunch of jumps here. And not a good time to talk about how good trick room is because it kind of just looked like he fell over but he did win a lot of time and in that time on the side of fusion they were able to score uh 80 points on the bottom tier two and plaga uses this as an opportunity to try to push on the top side there is an urshifu channeling his wicked blow for that unstoppable there's the trick room back now little hydro typhoon does find some members of fusion there and that might have been enough to maybe get a push on this pad. Not quite. Heavy slam on the side of Snorlax. Blastoise gets away with 1 HP. So the reason why Trick Room is not bad this game is a lot of Plaga's damage is on the back of this Maridon Charge Beam, right? So when your whole team goes in, if you place your Trick Room in a way where the Maridon's going to be outside of it, which naturally he is, Mimikyu itself is going to get upwards of 80% damage reduction from the Maridon's damage, right? So it's basically going to be taking close to no damage from Maridon. And if the Mimikyu can negate all that Maridon damage, it just has to brawl with the other melees. And against them, it can regen. It has a Paw and Puff L to support it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's anyone's game there. Little Spin Blastoise actually ends up getting the last hit there over both the secure tools. Um, but Fusion, their pad is below 20. I imagine they're going to let it crash. Right? When your top pad is below 20, uh, you can let the Regieleki crash into it and basically make it so the enemy team doesn't get a whole lot of value. You guarantee a small overcap. Right, Their pad's at 16, Regieleki crashes. That means you're only going to get a 4 overcap on that pad, which means that if you look at the points right now, both teams are missing one pad, but Fusion is up by 80 points. Um, but Fusion having the bottom tier one up means that this bottom objective should be in their favor. That being said, it looks like Plaga has a positioning advantage here. They can block out these snipe shots, so that isn't a reliable secure tool. Kira does find an engage onto the Snorlax. In that same time, Overheat finds the Reggie Steel. Snorlax not able to get that Unite move off to win any time, and they're going to have to retreat back to their pad. Kira on the tree, fishing again. He's trying to find a position. But it looks like Plaga is going to take their win there. They're not going to overextend their lead. And even though they're still down 80 points, they're happy with what they're able to get. And they're going to play for the rest of their farm. Yeah, I mean, Ray could go to either side. Like, there, there is secure tools on both sides. The one thing that's going to make the difference, though, is how the fight starts and which team has better positioning going into Ray. Right, right now, Fusion does have solid positioning, but it is on the top side of the map, right, where Plaga has their pad. So if Plaga wants to retreat, oh my god, what a nice snipe shot. Able to weave through everyone, finds the last hit, no one there to block it. And now Plaga's kind of stuck. They have to defend this Regieleki, or they further bleed into their points. But defending this Regieleki means that they don't have an opportunity to get any good positioning at the Ray fight. 
some good poke damage, but this is why you have a healer. This is what, what healers are made for. Tempo's going to be able to recover his HP. He's just going to go and farm in the jungle. Snorlax now able to get deep positioning as a result of that Regieleki take. And with Fusion being in the lead, they can comfortably just set up and wait for Plaga to make the first move. The only time we'll see Fusion look for an engage is if a snipe shot is found, right? If they get a snipe shot on a key target, it means that Plaga is going to be on the back foot and that's their time to go in, right? And this is where communication from your Intellion player is key, right? Basically, the Intellion player is fishing. He's throwing in his rod into the water and if something bites his rod, he's going to go for, they're going to go for the engage. If not, Fusion's got the lead and they're chilling. There's no reason for them to do anything. There's Kira, he tries to find some kind of engage. Not necessary though. And now Plaga's finally able to make some space in the center area of the map. But it does come at the cost of their Blastoise's focus ban. There is an Urshifu Unite, but there's a Hoopa portal that lets him go through. That Urshifu Unite, I think, was reset, but there is a Hydro Typhoon now. Snorlax's Unite move as well gives that buddy barrier over to the side of Intellion. He has the eject button to go over the wall. Heavy Slam not there in time. The Rapid Spin does allow him to go through the Hoopa portal. There is a Wicked Blow on to the side of the Hoopa, but Anemo is getting very, very low. One HP. Everyone on the side of Fusion is getting really low. A little bit of just misfiring there where Fusion... They didn't need to make anything happen, and I think they just pulled the trigger a little bit too soon. They're going to end up taking down almost all five members of Fusion, and Plaga's going to take game number one. In that moment, you don't have to do anything. Like, I get that you took down Blastoise half of its HP. You don't want him to get the Hooper reset, but sometimes you have to be okay with the, enemy, with the losing team getting something you know you have to give them a little bit if you're up 50 points in basketball right and the other team scores a three you don't need to freak out you're still up 47 you know well played by plaga though right they they capitalize on fusion's mistake and it only takes one mistake to really to really turn the tides of the fight there i really think trick room was fine like they they were winning the game right this was a low damage game obviously the Maridon did big damage Blastoise really seems to be like the Pokemon that's making the difference in a lot of these fights. But let's go back and watch that Rayquaza fight real quick. So we're at the two minute mark. Uh, let's go back to right here. All right. So for context, at this point in the game, Laga, the left side team, just got done clearing the Regieleki, right? So they're a little bit rate, late to Ray. Fusion is up close to 100 points. So now Plaga needs to make something happen, right? But... Every time they look to walk into the center part of the map, they ha they have to dodge these missiles that are being shot from Inteleon, right? All the bushes are being covered. You want to walk up, you're going to get yawned. If you continue to walk up, you're going to get sniped, right? If you get sniped, you need your Hoopa portal to portal you back. That's more time being wasted, right? All Fusion needs to do is hold out. They just need to hold the line, right? And in this moment, um... You know, we finally have to give up some of the bushes. We don't want to get engaged on. And slowly but surely, Fusion's going to find an opportunity to get through and make some space to be able to get through the map. A lot of what they're doing is they're using, like, the movement speed from this combined with, like, Hoopa movement speed or whatever to maybe find an opening. But sure. All right, Kira's walking down. He gets the move speed from the bottom bush here, right? instantly tries to horn leech and now they've finally been able to break through the walls of bossing say and now we've entered into the earth kingdom all right finally plaga has some positioning but there's only a minute left fusion just has to hold the line for one more minute one more minute and fusion wins the game right blastoise steps up he takes a bunch of damage here right in this moment this is a win for fusion right you might think like, oh no, the Blastoise is going to reset his HP and now they're going to have a full HP Blastoise. That's okay. You got the full, you got the focus ban from Blastoise out. It's, this is a win for us, right? And in this moment right here is where I think Fusion loses the game, right? Anemo goes for this play. He wants to lift the Blastoise out of the Hoopa Unite, Hoopa Portal, but it's just too little too late, right? 
Uh, the Blastoise ends up getting through the Hoopa portal. This puts your Shifu Unite move on cooldown now. Uh, it might get reset, it might not, but regardless, whatever, he's not gonna have it for the next 15 seconds, right? Blastoise comes out of the Hoopa portal, now he's full HP, and now there's nowhere Shifu Unite move, right? This Hydra Typhoon catches out the Inteleon, right? Because Inteleon gets ulted here, we have to use our blast or our Snorlax ult to, to shield him, right? Big ult from Kira, and now in this part, like there's full chaos, right? There didn't need to be chaos in this part of the fight. Uh, Anemo's in the back, he takes a bunch of damage. Uh, I mean, Tempo takes a bunch of damage, and you know, they're, they're scrambling. We lose our Mimikyu player, our Inteleon's one HP, our, our Shifu's one HP, our Eldegoss is one HP, all because. We pulled the trigger a little bit too too hard here, right? If we just don't go for this or Shifu unite, right? And instead we just wait. You just you take you you're patient. You have the lead. You don't need to get ants in your pants, and you'll be absolutely fine, right? Worst case, right? Worst case, Plaga starts to flip Ray. We're okay. We have Wicked Blower Shifu. We have Mimikyu unite move, right? If Plaga flips Ray, Mimikyu unites the Blaziken, so there's no overheat potential. They have nothing to stop our Wicked Blow, and then they have to also worry about Snipe Shot, right? A flip isn't a 50-50 when you have the tools to be able to stop the enemy from last hitting. The worst thing you can ask for is starting a fight down Unite moves and clumping up like you do here. So I think Fusion knows this. Fusion's a great team. Right, they're not gonna, it's not gonna affect them. Right, even if the best players all make mistakes, it happens. Um, but cool. Game number two, draft underway. Uh, before we, we get off into the game, let's just see how this draft went really quickly. Maridon, first pick from the side of Plaga, makes sense. Maridon's broken. Hoopa Mimikyu, right? They wanted to take away the Hoopa this time from um, Plaga. Also, Fusion opted to go for second pick after losing. That's something interesting to just put in the back of your mind. Usually when you lose, a lot of teams like to go for first pick. Fusion opted to go for second pick. Um, and fundamentally, the biggest thing in this draft that we're seeing as a difference is there's a Dodrio, and now there's a Chandelure, right? Chandelure being a really popular pick in the Latin America region, especially for Fusion. Um... It can help stop things like a Mammo Swine Engage by just putting down the move lock. So Mammo can't go for its Earthquake earthquake into Ice Fang combo. Um, it's good damage to just be able to deal their front line. But it is scary into Maridon as you're going to get outranged by the Charge Beam combo. Uh, I guess in that case, that's where you have your Dodrio and Mimikyu try to pull the weight. I do think, despite Trick Room looking okay last game, um, we're probably gonna see a Shadow Sneak Mimikyu. Typically, like, when you play an off-meta move in game one, and you lose that game, whether or not it's that move's fault, it's just easier for the mental of your team, for your own personal mental, to go back to what the meta move is, right? Like, it, you don't wanna have to have in the back of your mind, oh man, I, I went the wrong move or whatever. So, this Dojo went for the score, did end up going down. I don't think it's actually that bad, right? There's some KOs in the early game that are really bad, and it's like, how did you not see that coming? Um, in this case, I think the Dojo going for a stack, getting knocked out, isn't that bad. Dojo gets a stack, they're still back in time for Bs, um, and they're now off the map to be able to make rotations if they want to rotate to bottom. So, you saw the pathing there that Tempo did. He ran down this way to make sure that he wouldn't be seen by the enemy if they were hiding in any of these bushes. A lot of really small, deliberate things that these players are doing. Uh, but Don Lux kind of sniffing out what's going on, right? All is important is that they don't get knocked out here. Um, because this team is getting value on the other side of the map. He is maybe looking for some damage, does find the Electro Drift, but it flips him around, puts him on the other side, and now Tempo on the Dojo can chase him down. And Maridon's gonna have some Electro Drifts. He has the doll, he's winning some time, which is good that he's winning time, 
but bad that he got knocked out because it does mean now that this dodrio has got almost three stocks. This Mimikyu is going to have like three stocks. Um, considering his play rough, he's definitely going to be going uh, Shadow Sync this game as well. And now the side of Fusion, we're able to get a whole bunch of stocks. On the other side, Plaga did get some uh, of Fusion's jungle farm, but I think Fusion would gladly trade their jungle for attack weight stocks on their carries. That's absolutely fine by them. And Ice Fang finds the Mimikyu. Just barely. That's a max range Ice Fang. Well done by Kira. And this is an opportunity for Plaga to make a little comeback in this game. They have opportunity to maybe push. Kira can find another engage. Should be perfect. Icicle Spears. Overleveled Glaceon from that jungle invade is going to be scary. So, you know, even though they were happy with that trade, they still have to be careful. And Player Off does follow the Mirai, Mirai down there, but another Ice Fang catches out Mimikyu and it's not looking good for Nemo. I think he's really struggling to make things happen on the Mimikyu this set, and, it, and it's showing with uh, with Kira catching him out multiple times. Nice jump kick from the Dojo, jumping over that, that middle ledge there, able to get onto the other team. Tempo looking really clean. That was really clean. All right, so now being able to bring that Hoopa, Hoopa portal on the top side, Dodrio is up here, and there's a spin, but there is a last hit potential both from the Dodrio and the Chandelure as well. Chandelure did go overheat, so overheat over Flamethrower um, makes sense this game, right? You're going to have a Blastoise spinning on top of your head, and Flamethrower only really works if you're able to keep distance into your opponents. Overheat gives you the option to do both. Rhydon does jump in, but at the same time, Glaceon's going to go down to the Dojiro Unite move, and Tempo really, really carrying the weight and keeping Fusion alive in this game. Anemo struggling throughout this game, but that's the beauty of the, some of the best teams in the world, where if one of your players is having a bad time, you have someone else on your team that can make a comeback. Nice hyperspace hold, not able to get anyone knocked out of there. And that's a big difference between Mamo and Snorlax as well. Right? Snorlax in that case would be able to heavy slam and knock enemies out of the portal. Right? You have to be grounded to take Hoopa portals. Whereas Earthquake on Mamoswine doesn't give you a knock up, but rather it gives you like a pull in towards that Earthquake. So the only way Mamo can realistically stop Hoopa portals is by ice fanging one individual target out of it. Or like in some very rare cases, um, Earthquaking and pulling them out of a portal. Also, technically, the Unite move slam does give a stomp but all right let's see earthquake ice fan combo onto kira uh, onto the onto the tree tree's not gonna be able to heal back through that damage from glaceon kira's just been playing really well really really solid this set especially on the mammo it's gonna look for another engage i don't think he had an eject button to combo on that one Good overheat damage is going to force Kira on the Mamoswine to back away, but that might be just enough space for them to take down Regirock. There is overheat, there's the final hit, but not enough. And Tree does find the engage. You combos their Unite move onto the Glaceon, forces out the Glaceon to use that Glacial stage, and the Chandler's Unite move is just not quite good enough to be able to get that damage. There is that Ejug Bun from Mamma to get him out into safety. Mimikyu forced to use their Unite move on the backline on the full HP Blasters just to be able to get away and have that shield to live. Good Hoopa portal as well to send their team back to base. And that tree is still alive. Mimikyu is still alive. Pretty close game, all things considered. But Fusion having this 100-point lead is going to weigh down on Plaga when it comes to a late game, right? Fusion had this similar type of setup in the last game. And it came down to the last minute where Fusion just pulled the trigger that they ne didn't necessarily need to. This game, if Fusion just continues the pressure that they have onto Ray and they play around Rayquaza just a little bit better, they should be definitely favored to take game number two. Another engage, Kira finds his Mimikyu. Animo, that's the third time this game that Animo's really dropped the ball and just been out of position. And Kira's been there perfectly to take advantage of it. Glaceon buffs not quite enough to take down the Dodrio, level 13 versus level 12. And that Dodrio tempo just having such a good game throughout this game gives him a little bit of an edge to stay alive. 
The key for Fusion to win this game is going to be for Anemo to step it up in the late game. And for Plaga to be able to make a comeback, they're going to need to find it. It's going to be on the back of Kira, right? He's found a lot of engages so far. I'm confident he'll be able to find another one. But whether or not it'll be enough, we'll have to see. It doesn't even have to be on the Dodrio. Anyone that Kira finds should be a strong engage. To be honest, Dodrio is probably the scariest one to find because the moment you engage the Dodrio, he's just going to ult past you and get to your backline. The eject button, though, you're going to get basically one eject button as a Mammoth Swine, and that one eject button is going to be all of his engage, right? If he finds that eject combo and gets a good earthquake, that's the setup he needs. If not, he might not have enough range. Take a deep breath, because this fight means everything to Fusion, and that means they're going to have to do it all again here in Game 3. For Plaga, they want to have a huge upset and carry that momentum through the rest of the tournament. Tempo looking in the top path right here, seeing if they can spot out exactly where this Blastoise is. What you're good, what you're looking for here, Dupesex, is a ton of All right, so Hoopa's just looking for any amount of vision that you can get. When you use that Phantom Force and you're near a bush, your Phantom Force auto-target can reveal opponents, or at least give you knowledge that they might be there. Glaceon using their ice shard autos just to build their spears up that way if anyone comes into range they can activate those spears to get some good damage in blasters on the backside did take a lot of damage from dodrio and tempos find found some good positioning on the back line he's just harassing them this glaceon wants to click that icicle spear on him dodrio uh, glaceon does use their unite move tries to get that dodrio not enough zones out the dodrio fights begun now the, the unite move on the side of tree catches out a couple people dodrio gets that unite move instantly takes down that Glaceon, Glaceon's out for the fight in this fight. Shadow Sneak not able to connect on anyone, but Anemo doesn't need to find anything. Fusion just needs to hold this line, prevent them from getting Rayquaza, and they're going to be absolutely fine. Chandelure goes back, recovers their HP, but it's still a relatively close game. 40 seconds remaining. There's still one maybe potential opportunity for Plaga to make a comeback here, but Kira's getting burned down. He's going to take the Mimikyu Unite. They're going to get some scores off the Mimikyu here, so, or Dojo gets two, Mimikyu gets a uh, Hundo Burger there as well, and Hoopa's gonna get 100 and think that game is over. And these teams are pretty evenly matched, right? I think Fusion definitely seems like the stronger team. Um, is it even Fusion? It, it might just be Tempo, right? It might just be Tempo, right? Tempo had perfect, perfect spacing in that late game fight, and we'll go over it as well. Let, let, let's actually go and review it right now, right? But some of it we're going to have to observe through the minimap, but that's okay. Right? Tempo gets this red buff that gives him 14. And now he's going to run through the jungle and try to find some positioning on this side, right? If he can get here, it means that the moment he sees all five enemy team, all five en enemy um, players, he can go for either a score or walk down and look for a unite move as well. Right? But... All we're looking at is the minimap, right? Tempo has control of this bush, control of this bush, right? You, you can even see off screen that he's going for some try attacks to be able to scout out whatever he can, right? And he's moving a little bit to keep that movement speed bonus, right? The Blastoise jumps over, and then if you look at right here where my cursor is, you notice that the Blastoise loses half of his HP, and right, that's a good, like, a good amount of poke damage. It might have even triggered his focus band. Uh, it doesn't, looks like it doesn't, right? And now that's allowed Tempo to be able to get more spacing into the enemy jungle, right? Uh, you can see the Glaceon is building their spears, and the Glaceon wants to activate spears on this Dojo so badly, right? That's all the Glaceon. This is why the Glaceon is picked in this situation, right? But every time the Glaceon gets a little close, Tempo is able to walk away, right? And then when the Glaceon walks away to get its spears back, Tempo has some damage, right? And look how close they are, right? The moment t Tempo gets a little bit close, he walks away. And in this moment, the Glaceon is hoping that they can use their Unite move, right? You get a little bit of a jump when you Unite move. And if you can hit the Dojo, you can 
maybe use that movement speed gap to be able to catch him out. But Tempo perfectly had the spacing. He jump uses his jump kick away. And now Glaceon's forced to use their spears on this side of the map. Right? They get a lot of good damage. But Tempo, he's super ready. He's back in the fight now. And now the Glaceon's as good as dead. Right? Glaceon has no Unite move. Yeah, he uses blue his Ice Ghost Spears on the blue buff. But if you see how fast this Glaceon goes down, it doesn't like, maybe he would have got some damage on the Tempo, but he fell so fast that it just wouldn't have mattered, right? And Tempo uses a re residual move speed to get out of the fight. And this is just like last game. There's a minute left. All Fusion has to do is hold the line. And yeah, the game just ends up fully carried by Dodrio, right? Like throughout this entire game, the Dodrio found different opportunities despite the Mimikyu struggling throughout the game he kept his team on his back and I wouldn't be surprised if Fusion just picks Dojiro again right Tempo has to be feeling himself um if there's an opportunity for him to go Dojiro I think we're gonna see it and a crossel pick interesting crossel pick so Defender pool that's left was Mamo or Tree. I don't know why they really would have wanted to go cross. I, I honestly can't tell you. The one, the one thing, and I, I can actually, I think I figured it out actually. They were debating between going Slowbro because they didn't want the other team to get Slowbro to lock down tempo. But Slowbro itself isn't that powerful of a tank, right? The difference is Crustle, both in lane and throughout the game, is a hard counter to Slowbro. In lane, you have Rock Slide, which interrupts Water Gun. After the laning phase, you have Rock Tomb to lock down a Slowbro who's already slow and has no mobility. So maybe it's a preemptive counter to Slowbro because they still want to go to Drio, and this way they can go to Drio but have a stronger early game and where they're countering the slow bro. Tempo still gets his slow bro. Uh, Animo, who struggled on Mimikyu admittedly last game, still got, ended up getting it banned out. And this game, we're gonna see him on the Buzzwall. It's a pick that Fusion has been playing since Buzzwall was good. Even when Buzz got nerfed, Fusion's still been picking it. I think it's a solid Pokemon. Uh, when you can pair it with the right tools, right? So, Buzzwell with Hoopa in lane is really, really strong. If you have a more defensive support, something like a Blissey, something like a Clef, those Pokemon don't enable Buzzwell as hard, right? You want Buzz to be able to get early last hits, get an early level five, and be able to put pressure on the enemy team. But let's break down Plaga's draft here as well, right? They have some of the tools that we've seen all throughout the day. Blastoise being that like hybrid defender, all-rounder kind of, you know, fits into the puzzle piece type pick i think these teams really like that eldegoss has been a very consistent supporter zoroark i believe other than one game is like seven and one today almost 100 percent win rate uh so the zoroarks that have been able to do really well have been popping off but this is a zoroark that doesn't have a comfy on its head so that definitely is a bit of a difference when zorg has that comfy versus when it doesn't zorg also um one of the speedsters that matches up really well into Dodrio, right? Dodrio is a really fast and hard to lock down character, but Zoroark has the mobility and mobility paired with a stun that can catch out that Dodrio. And then once you have Dodrio in a stun, you can stun lock it in your Shadow Claw Fane Attack combo, and you have your final point and click Fane Attack to be able to damage him down. So a lot of really interesting nuanced matchups here throughout the game, uh, but it's going to be pretty interesting. So what Plaga did here is because they didn't want to get that slow bro crossel matchup in the bottom side of the map, which is notoriously crossel favored, they actually sent the slow bro to the top lane um, and put the Blastoise down there, who should pair a little bit better into that crossel lane. Despite that, though, Hoopa Buzz is still a really strong lane, so it doesn't ultimately matter that much. But I think they did want to be able to have an early game aggression here and leaving their Slowbro up here may be a part of their game plan. So coaching onto the Zoroark, Zoro does find the engage, but Animo backs up. Looks like Fusion didn't really get to play on any side of the map there. Tempo was kind of just hiding in the bush. Um, but they did get some stuff on the bottom side of the map. Tempo's just waiting. Now that he sees them reveal themselves, he hops out. 
is going to take some damage into Mew. A lot of what Plaga picked this game is anti-Dodrio measures, right? Mew, a very annoying character for Dodrio to deal with. Why? It has point-and-click damage and a point-and-click slow. It's hard to hit Dodrio with skill shots, but it's not that hard to hit it with point-and-click moves, right? So Mew can get these boosted autos, good damage, the E-boss to slow down the Dodrio. Um... Is it going to matter? I don't know. Tempo, arguably the best Dodrio player at this event right now, and he's playing like it. So he's used to all of these counter matchups. Not that it's going to matter too much, but it will slow him down a little bit. Tempo's going to take a good amount of damage, but not enough from the level 5 Mew. Maridon, kind of a quiet Pokemon this game so far. Not really doing too great on levels is falling behind compared to this Blastoise who they send in the bottom side. And this game, it's a Water Spout, uh, Water Spout Blastoise. So just looking to go full damage. They are lacking a little bit of sustained damage because Mew doesn't have good objective damage. As we see the Zoroark go down to the Dotrio on the top side of the map. Nice stun as well from the Hoopa to be able to provide some displacement. Um, but yeah, when you have a Mew as your primary damage dealer, um, you know, only time Mew has like good sustained objective damage is when you're on coaching Ebo. But outside of that, it doesn't do well at actually burning down enemies, like slowly whittling away their HP. And that's where the Blastoise can kind of supplement that a little bit. But all right, Plaga set up on the top objective. Whenever there's a Hoopa in the game, top objective is more in play than bottom because these teams want to either protect or take down pads. And the best way to do that is Regieleki. It is going to go to the side of Fusion, right? And it's important for Fusion that the other team doesn't get it so they don't lose their top pad. Nicely played by the Zorak here. He's going to find his Unite move as well once he's dove onto the enemy team. Focus Band's going to keep him barely alive, but he does take down the Hoopa and the Dodrio at the same time. And all their efforts to be able to take that objective so they don't lose their top pad kinds of end up going to waste here. Maridon's going to try his best to charge Beam and charge forward, but there's where that Blastoise Spin Toys actually makes a difference, right? You actually have some kind of damage that you can do this Maridon when they step up. And now Fusion losing their top pad is really, really bad for them, right? Because Hoopa's in the game, Hoopa now doesn't have the opportunity to be able to have map control to the top side of the map with their hyperspace holes. Big, big win for Plaga. Yeah, fortunately for at least Jax right now, there's not as much CC as that other Zorark was staring down. Nice little engagement here. Buzzwell has been knocked out, and they're putting some pressure on this 3v2. Not quite going to materialize yet. You know, I gotta All right, say, bottom objective is right getting right burned down. There's that coaching e-ball damage as well. Last hit, they're going to use that Zorak Unite just to guarantee it. Also means that the Zorak's going to have a speed bonus when they look for this engagement. Chain CC onto that crossbow, so he's not able to get his Unite move off. Hydro Typhoon does catch out a Nemo on this Buzzwell, but he does still find the engagement on the Mew. Mew not able to get their Unite move off. Now Crossel comes to the fight off that Hooper. Hyper uh, uh, rings unbound. Dojo does get Silver ulted, but there is a Nemo with the Buzzwell Unite as well. Super Soul Slam, not quite enough. Both the damage dealers on the side of Fusion end up going down in this push attempt. Crossel does have a small amount of points. If they can just break down this pad, even if it's a zero overcap, they're happy. You know, relatively even exchange from both of these sides, but I think Fusion's happy to finally take a pad off the map to be able to regain some of their map control. 19 points, a little bit more than that now. Around 40 point differential for these two teams with Fusion leading the scoreboard again. Now the fight is going to move to the top side of the map. Both teams have expelled their Unite moves. Maybe there's a Mew Unite move coming off cooldown. There is Mew. Tempo's got his Unite move as well. Both of these teams might be happy to fight here, but they also don't want to lose points on any side of the map. Uh, there is a slow bro. There's a push happening on the bottom side of the map. They were able to defend that push. But in this moment, this is where Plaga wants to make a strike happen. Either they push top with the Regieleki, or they fully rotate bot to the bottom side of the map. They will find out, though, that Plaga actually lost two members in that engagement. Fusion was able to set up some scores uh, on the bottom tier 2 of Plaga and also able to defend their tier 1 as well. So it's these small moments here where Fusion's able to inch towards their point lead, right? Getting some scores on that tier 2. But it did leave the Hoopa vulnerable, which means that now Plaga has the map control for the bottom side objective. Uh, Hoopa's going to be late to this fight, for sure. 
And whatever Reggie it is can be really important. Crossell's going to step up. Does it have his focus band? Forced to use the Rubble Rouser. Had that focus band proc there as well. Hydro Typhoon from the Blastoise catches out a couple members. Slow Beam on the Dodrio. Lots of Unite moves being used late into this game. Zorark Unite move there used as well. And now Plaga wants to take down this bottom pad. They don't want the enemies to have any kind of map control. And they want to regain this point lead. Do a little bit of math. 40 goes in. And I think... Did the Slowbro score 24? Okay, they didn't get as many points as they could have, but I think the urgency there might be for Slowbro to get his Unite move back. It is a trade-off, right? You don't get as many points scored in, um, but if the Slowbro can get his Unite move back, that's that's fine. Right? Pads are down, close battle. Genuinely, these teams shouldn't have any idea who's actually in the lead. It's two points, but in moments like this, this will favor Fusion. Why? Fusion has the opportunity to send Dodrio to go for micro scores. They also have a Hoopa that they can use to be able to bring their teammate back with Rings Unbound. Right? It's a, it's a score game. At the end of the day, the team that has more points is going to be able to win. But if Fusion uses that opportunity to back cap, it's going to allow Slowbro to get his Unite move back. So there's decisions that both of these teams need to make. Do they want to just take a fight or make this a score game? Either team can win off either decision. It's going to come down to who executes better. Fusion wants to take the fight. They don't want to have the slow beam to be, have any opportunity. Slowbro forced to use his Unite move onto the Crustle. This gives Temple the opportunity to go into the fight. Temple uses the Unite move. Dojiro is running around. There's no slow beam to counter him now. Temple is going to be able to cat, retreat back into the fight. Crustle living on one HP with just his shield alive. Zoning out the Blastoise. Blastoise looking for that pick on the Temple. Temple makes it out alive. But him and Crustle are the only two members. The rest of the Plaga was able to take down fusion Rayquaza is getting low the winner of Rayquaza is the winner of this series and the loser is going to go home Temple does he have the seal he doesn't Plaga is able to secure down Ray and with that a minute 20 and shields all on the side of Plaga it's going to look like the Mexicans from Latin America North are going to take down fusion your previous AOS Cup EUIC winners arguably your favorites in Latin America to take the whole tournament Rough fight, for sure. Well played on both sides. We didn't even get to catch the action as to what happened with the side of Plaga. Um, but a, a, a lot of back and forths. That being said, 50 seconds left. 50 seconds. I've seen comebacks happen at this uh, from, from, from this point in the game. But it looks like it, looks like it might be over. I think Fusion's, Fusion's in base. And I think uh, this one, this one might be over. Incredible stuff. Plaga gonna take down Fusion in game number three. An amazing team, but without question, Doob Snacks, this is an upset. Yeah, uh, we've got rings. Well done by Plaga, though, for sure. Some sort of push, but look at all those ray shields still existing as we wrap this thing up with Eldegoss Unite move. Ten seconds left. The clock is counting down, and Plaga. I mean, I don't know if they're feeling lucky. I don't know if they're feeling... Uh, Excellent know, game. Really well done by them. Was gonna work, but look at that here. Taking down the... Single elimination is rough, right? You don't get... Uh, you don't get a lot of opportunities in single elimination to fix your mistakes, fix your draft. Right? In a double elimination format, you... You get to learn from your mistakes. You get to adapt the draft. And... You know, you have an opportunity to still come back in the tournament. Single elimination doesn't give you that. Both teams played really well. Both teams played really well, right? And I don't want to be too hard on any individual player, but I think what really, like, the crux of this entire series was a Nemo. Like, a, a, a player that, like, really pulls her own weight for Fusion a lot of times, right? A Nemo historically has been their Scyther player. And they started the show a lot of times for Fusion, despite Tempo being a really good player. Animo just didn't have a game where he looked good, right? Game number one on that Mimikyu, the Trick Room, it was a cheeky pick. I wanted to believe in it, but he really didn't do much. Um, game number two on the Mimikyu still didn't look very clean. He had some okay moments. And this game on the Buzz, like, just couldn't find, like, couldn't find much to really do.